So I'm going to read the definition of a pandemic, which is a global outbreak of disease that occurs when a new influenza A virus appears or emerges in the human population, causes serious illness, and then spreads easily from person to person worldwide. And as you know, we're at the next to the top level with regard to what we're seeing right now. But I want to illustrate why flu is the continuing problem that it is. How many of y'all had influenza before? Okay, the power of flu is you will get it again. And it's related to its ability to change. But I want you to use, I'm going to describe and illustrate how this works. You have to imagine that my head is a virus. And I know y'all have great imaginations because you're working on balancing the budget, right? Right. <laughs> okay, so my head's a virus, and viruses are like this. They have certain features that make them identifiable, say as an H1N1, for example, and make me identifiable as Virginia Henshaw, my nose, my chin, ears. But I want you to focus on my hair because it looks really nice today, okay? And that's not the humorous part. Um, but sticking out of viruses, particularly with flu, are two very important proteins that have sugars on them. And this is the H and the N, and you keep hearing about those. The H is the hemagglutinin, which is the virus attachment protein. The N is the neuraminidase, which has, helps the virus get out of infected cells and spread. So they're both very important. So one of the things, though, what a virus needs to do in life is it needs to spread to other people. It, if you have a virus sitting on this table, it will not make more of itself. It can't. It's a parasite. It needs to get inside a living cell. Mm -hmm. And cells look like this. And we're cutting back on costs at the university to use everything we've got. But they actually do. They have pseudopods or little projections sticking off of them. So when a virus comes along, what it's going to do is it's going to attach to the cell and enter. And then it can produce thousands of virus particles that can spread then from me to Calvin or to other cells within me and cause damage. And so that's how viruses continue going on. But they are parasites. They need the cell. They use the cell's machinery. Well, the uh, other aspect that's very uh, challenging with regard to flu or any virus is we want to control them. Most people don't love them like I do. Um, I'm a virologist by training, uh, but we want to prevent them and provide protection for people. And we do that via vaccines. And how many remember going to get the polio vaccine on the little sugar cube? It's a wonderful vaccine. That virus only occurs in humans, and it's very stable. It doesn't change, so we should be able to eradicate it. Well, what you do when you go down and get a vaccine, you produce what's called antibodies in yourself. Your body does this for you. And these antibodies, this is structurally correct, slightly enlarged, okay? So if you have these antibodies after you get a vaccine and this virus comes along, what happens then is you're protected, okay, from infection, okay? That's how a good vaccine works. And we have some marvelous examples with that. That's one of the reasons we could eradicate smallpox and should be able to eradicate polio. But now flu is a very messy virus in that it changes a lot. I'll be back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I have mutated. Now I'm still recognizable as Virginia Henshaw. In fact, some people think I look better this way. Uh, but I have undergone a mutation or a change. Okay, so what happens now is this antibody you had before may not fit as well and I may be able to infect you. Okay, this is a very common occurrence with flu and this is the reason we change the vaccine every year. It's because this virus has mutated and this is called drift. I'm still, for example, I was an H1N1 before, I'm still an H1N1 but I'm slightly different and you don't aren't as well protected so we change the vaccine. And sadly, there is one virus that does this over and over again within the same person, changes all the time, and that's HIV. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons it's so difficult to control. But flu is a champion at doing this, and that's why we regularly change the vaccine to keep up with it. Now, flu does something that no other virus does, and it changes dramatically. Okay, 
I'm no longer recognizable as Virginia Henshaw, thank goodness. <laughs> I have undergone an ana- I've undergone an antigenic shift. I have a totally new hat, and you can well imagine that this would absolutely provide no protection for us uh, with regard to pre- uh, preventing the virus infection. Now these new hats are ones that are associated with causing pandemics and they come from viruses in other species, influenza viruses. And how does that happen? How do they pick up these new hats? Because see, you'd have no protection again. This is an H5. This is exactly what an H5 is. Nobody's ever had that in people before except recently. Well, the way that works, if, if I have, whoops, I dropped my virus. If I have two influenza viruses, they have eight pieces of RNA as their genome. They're very simple little viruses, actually. If I have this one, say this is a swine virus and this is an avian virus, if it gets into the same host in the same cell, and that's not real common, what happens is these genes mix. Out of this bag now, I can, I can uh, pick out 256 different genetic combinations. That's power. That is how viruses, like flu, pick up new genes from viruses and other species when they get in the same host. So this is a very powerful aspect of flu. Now the other reason we'll always have flu around is because there's a huge reservoir of influenza viruses in nature. Okay? The major one is uh, in birds particularly migratory waterfowl. Doesn't cause a big problem in them typically. But they have all the H and N's. Like in nature there's 16 H's and nine N's that you hear a lot about. Birds have all of them. Their viruses have all of them. We only see a few coming out into people. Okay? And a virus only has one of each. So that's when you see an H1 N1 or an H5 N1. It's referring to those two particular proteins, and they're very important in protection. But there are viruses out there in nature. We also have horses and pigs and people and seals, marine mammals, also have flu. So it's a very common virus out in the environment. Um, So we have to be well aware of it. And now I'm going to switch a little bit more over. I even have my official pig influenza hat. Pigs <laughs> have a very special place in influenza world. And um, swine influenza, their own virus, H1N1, has been circulating in pigs since the beginning of the last century. Mm-hmm. So it's, a, it's not an uncommon disease. They look just like us when they get it. They have runny nose, fevers, lethargy, uh, very similar symptoms. But they're, they're a little different from us in the fact that these, these pigs, they have receptors Remember the receptors on their cells that make them readily infectable with avian influenza viruses and human influenza viruses. Okay? So that sets up, we call them the potential mix master of the flu world. And viruses that come out of them seem to be more able to go in people. And we shouldn't be sanctimonious about it because we give our viruses to them. And that's one of the reasons pig farmers are very careful about protecting pigs from humans. Uh, But this is a natural part of the flu world, and we know pigs do play a very special role. And we've actually seen a virus like the one that's currently circulating right now occur on other occasions. It has genes from avian, human, and swine viruses. Um, and it, it, but it hasn't gone as quickly person to person and spread like it is currently doing. So it's changed. And so you have to be very alert when that happens because a lot of the population, even though it's a variant, there's an H1N1 in the vaccine right now. We vaccinated 40 million Americans against swine flu in the late 70s. But it's sufficiently different that you wouldn't be well protected with the current vaccines. So that's the big big, uh, concern about this virus.